Can you hear me now? I can. My wife's here to check me out when I didn't get my my microphone turned on. She let me know. Yeah, so hello. anyway, hello. Uh, welcome all of you who are uh, joining us here for this uh, Monday night demonstration for the Trinity Arts Guild. Um, we're, uh, Cindy and I are, are happy to, always happy to have <clears throat> friends come into our home, into my studio and, and uh, join us and uh, this is one of those opportunities where the Trinity Arts Guild has asked me to do a demonstration for their their monthly meeting. Uh, I'm going to be doing uh, uh, some more of these kinds of things. There's another one coming up Wednesday which I will tell you more about. <clears throat> Excuse me. Right now I'm, I'm kind of looking at um, 
trying to, dis to discern how many people are checking in through the YouTube or through the Zoom uh, channel here. Uh, there's some that are still checking in, it looks like. And we've got people from uh, lots of places coming in. It looks like, um, looks like we have uh, quite a few. Uh, I po posted one a little while ago. We have, uh, we have someone here from uh, San Diego jumping in. So it's not just people in the uh, Trinity Arts Guild uh, family, which is uh, Trinity Arts Guild, again, is um, a, a group, um, about 100 people. They're about 60 years old. I think their anniversary is next year. And they are here in the <clears throat> central Dallas, Texas metroplex. And uh, they are a, a wonderful, wonderful bunch. Um, and anyway, I'm getting all these wonderful uh, greetings here. There's uh, Minnesota. Um, and we've got uh, people locally. We've got people from, oh, here's uh, Trina from Smoky Sacramento. I feel bad for you all out there. We were just talking to Cindy's cousin up in Oregon, and <clears throat> she's a forest ranger and uh, quite, a, quite an ordeal for everybody to go through. So we're really, uh, um, you know, uh, shouting out prayers to, <clears throat> to all of our family friends and, and people that we know out that way. And then, of course, we got a hurricane coming in and we have COVID going on. So why not just have a good evening of, of painting and, and uh, doing that because we're, uh, we're, uh, we're able to do this and uh, get to you from, uh, from here in Dallas. Uh, we're just north of Dallas in Plano. And uh, it's really a lot of fun to do these workshops I've been doing and to do these kinds of demos. Um, <clears throat> So let's, I uh, just wanted to show you a couple of things. Um, next, I mentioned a minute ago, next Wednesday, uh, the California Watercolor Association has invited me to do another demonstration like this. It's going to be that, uh, a painting like that one that's shown there, of uh, the Pacific Grove Light um, Lighthouse. It's a little bit uh, adjusted uh, composition that I did, but it's going to be a fun painting. Um, and <clears throat> so that'll be next Wednesday, and it's 7 o'clock Pacific time. So it'll be 9 o'clock, 9 to 11 my time. I'm going to probably fall asleep halfway through because that is uh, late for me. Um, so we'll, we'll uh, talk about a couple other things as we go on here. Um, and, uh, but I think we can probably just get started. Let me take one quick check over here to the Zoom uh, conference and see what we've got. Um, looks like most people are joining on through Facebook or YouTube, which is a, to me is a good, a really good way to do it. Um, uh, the, the quality of the image is much better. Richard Stevens, howdy, uh, great painter from over uh, not far from here, um, Arkansas, right? And uh, glad to have you on board. <clears throat> <clears throat> it's fun to uh, fun to see uh, all these friends, all these uh, people that I uh, seen in my workshops. Uh, some of you I know by name and not by by sight, but it is a it is a treat. Um, so let's uh, let's just get into the painting. We won't spend a lot of time. It's uh, supposed to be about an hour, hour and a half demo. And so what we're going to do is um, I'll start with I want to show you <clears throat> an image that I'm going to be working from. This is a um, harbor, a fishing village in Qingdao, um, China. Uh, Cindy and I were privileged to go there last year, last summer, or well, spring, and paint for a few weeks. And uh, it was just a really, really uh, enjoyable experience. And, and we were supposed to go back this summer and, uh, well, you know, what happened with all that. But um, Qingdao is a, is a very modern, <clears throat> very modern city in the um, on the coast, uh, and it's a, a very, uh, very westernized, except just on the edge of this, this uh, city, there's this fishing village, and they have these boats that are, that they look like they're man, you know, handmade out of logs. I mean, they're really interesting. So I have um, chosen to paint this, and it's going to be, because it's a relatively simple composition, uh, it should be able to, I should be able to get it done um, in a fairly quick amount of time. Um, and so this is my um, my surface here, where I'm going to be painting. I have painted this this once before, 
which is where the graphic for this came from. This is a, a horizontal view. And um, I added a boat to the foreground to bring it down a little further. And that's what I'm doing here as well. I'm putting a boat a little closer in. Um, this is the actual photo, which I think you have up there. Yep, yeah. you have a square version. And this is a couple of other other boats um, in that area. Now these these um, these are pretty remarkable uh, crafts. Um, so that's kind of one of the intriguing things about it. Um, so I have um, sketched this out, and I'm going to. Uh, <clears throat> do a, a pretty wet wash into this whole thing and create some uh, some color and some um, some tone that will sort of set the tone. What I want to do on, on the photo of the sky is just really oh, oh, sort of hazy, but there is sun shining. You can see some shadows. I'm going to have the sun coming from the right side, which it is right and behind everything. It's sort of a backlit scene. So I'm going to have some light over here, lighter values, or lighter colors, brighter, a little more yellow, a little cooler over here on this side of the sky. So that, that light here, and this, this will be lighter down in here where there's the this, this sand, and of course the water here will reflect the blue up there. So I'm going to try to keep it separated a little bit when I go into this wet, wet into wet. I'm going to start with, um, so I'll start with some water. A uh, good way to start wet into wet is with some water. I guess everybody can hear me. I'm <clears throat> I'm not seeing any um, any uh, comments that they, you can't hear or anything like that. So it must be. Cindy says I'm coming through loud and clear, and if if she can hear it, then she's monitoring. <clears throat> and um, if you have any specific questions, um, you know you can you can. She might, I mean, while I start painting, I'm not going to be watching uh, this, this, these chats coming in and answering each one. But if you have a question about something, um, you know, uh, let me know. Um, so here we, just for fun, you know, here we got a Annapolis, Maryland. We have New York City. We have Weatherford, Texas. We have Gwen Island on the Chesapeake Bay, <clears throat> on Chesapeake Bay. Oh, Jan's, Jan Finn Duffy's here from Gwen Island. Good old, good friend. So all these people that, all of you that are popping in here, it's so fun to see your, see your names and uh, know you're here. <laughs> Sorry, I can't just, you know, you know, open up and really have a communication, but this is sort of a one-way ordeal. So I'm going to just... Um, Put some water on there. I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to just um, use a flat brush and get a little more water over the whole thing. Let's go right down into here. Um, one of the things about talking and painting and, and doing this all at the same time, it's uh, sometimes a little, the painting suffers <clears throat> sometimes because I end up um, um, not concentrating. Uh, I know some some people just stop talking and then just paint, which is probably what I should do. But I, I kind of I don't I feel like I I don't want to cheat you out. I like to let you know um, <clears throat> what's going on in my head as I'm painting, and that's probably a scary thing. But uh, we'll uh, <laughs> we'll try not to uh, make it too uh, too scary. I'm going to start with some of my warm tones. So right over here, I'm going to have some, this is some raw sienna, warm tones into this area of the, of the right side, the, <clears throat> into the sand down on the bottom. I'm just going to put these warm tones in. I'm going to then, um, probably I should bring it a little bit, just a little more color. I'm going to put a little, little bit of, um, a little red for fun. But really, what I'm going to have here is a, a pretty much a cerulean sky. I like cerulean for my skies. Um, there's a lot of different colors you can use, but it feels good to me most of the time with cerulean. 
Uh, so I'm going to put some of that up in here. Now, I don't want this to be a real bright blue sky. So let's just uh, tone that back a little bit with some of this warm tones. Just kind of kill that and make it a little more gray. <clears throat> Now let's let that sit a little while. I've got some. I want to put some clouds up into this sky. I'll pick up some of this excess water on the sides. Sometimes I get my hand in it and then drag my hand through, and then then it becomes a problem. So I want this underpainting of this area here to be blue. There's going to be water now. In the photo, the water is is not in. Uh, the tide is out, but it's coming in. We were there in the one of our fellow painters, uh, Chan Disnaki from Australia, uh, had to move. He was down about where that rock is there painting, and then the water came came up, and he had to flee for higher ground. <clears throat> I'm going to put a little violet. I'm going to take. Um, I'll stay with the with the uh, my cerulean. I'm going to add a little um, uh, alizarin crimson make kind of a gray violet and do this down here in the bottom kind of tone some of this uh, a little bit down get some of that uh, brightness of the yellow off of there and let's see I'm going to take a smaller brush and put a little color onto these boats um, I like to look for underlying colors. Um, it's pretty wet. You can see it on that view there. This mm -hmm. thing's still pretty pretty wet. So I'm going to go a little slow here and, and just throw some color on some of these things. Uh, there's some underlying colors that I see in this um, in these boats, and part of it's pretty much just a, like a burnt sienna. And so I'm going to put some of this color on here on these boats. Uh, just to give it a little tone. And when I go in with darker values and so on, there will be some color there. Um, I actually might just put a little bit of that right into the... There's a lot of stuff going to be happening into this uh, shoreline here, so a little color there doesn't hurt. Um, the buildings, uh, I could put some color in there. Um, I don't really need to. I'm going to go in there and do those separately. So I'm waiting to see if this, um, I want to get this top area to dry a little bit before I add the clouds in that I want. <clears throat> so, but I can get started with it, I guess. I'm going to use a, uh, <clears throat> this is a pretty uh, interesting brush that, that I like a lot. This is a Neef uh, rigger. It's a real long handled but a long fibered rigger with a lot of uh, these are Taclon fibers and so they're they're synthetic and they and I can get a fine point if I want to but I can also smash it down and get me some really good that was pretty good English wasn't it get me some <laughs> get Cindy laughs get me yeah. get me some um, some nice textures and things. So I'm going to make a gray with some colors. I'm going to use these primaries, basically, some of the raw sienna, some of the salizarin, some of this ultramarine blue. I'm going to just keep working it until I get a gray that I kind of like that's a warm gray. Um, not too, not too much going on. Maybe add a little a little bit of color on the brush on the ends. You can, you can always uh, have more than one color on a brush. It kind of makes for a, makes for some interesting things. Now let's uh, get rid of some of the pigment. I don't want it too wet. And I need to try this and see what it's going to do. Now my clouds, I want to have clouds sort of floating uh, in, a, in the distance. Maybe, maybe back in here there are smaller clouds. And over in here, there's some clouds, maybe some. And then they're going to get a little larger as they get forward. If you are ever, you know, if you're a person that lives near ocean, ocean uh, uh, front, 
clouds are pretty interesting and you can create depth through the way you do the clouds so hopefully these will give me some feeling of of depth and these are just those little floaty floating little clouds Michael, were the clouds in china very different i'm trying to remember cindy's asked me if the clouds in china were different well fortunately you know we had heard things about you know um, pollution and and we didn't really have much of that. We had a lot of real, real uh, nice weather. And we had, uh, when we were up in this area near the Great Wall, we were uh, painting and it was uh, cooler. And, uh, but we had a windstorm one day with a bunch of dust. But I don't remember the clouds so much. I think they were kind of, and on this particular day and the photo was taken, there were really no, um, no clouds really at all. It was just uh, one of those days where the, I guess it was somewhat hazy. And um, I think I need, uh, looking at this, I need a little bit of something up in here just to, so I don't have a big empty hole. Now, this is all an area of rest. I don't need it to ha have a lot of drama. Uh, the lights coming from the right, I could go in and start to shape these clouds a little bit more, but I kind of like leaving them simple. Um, so I think I will do that. darken up a little bit on here with a little bit more pigment now that it dry as it's drying this pigment will settle a little bit stronger so when this is dry now I'll go in and I'll paint this uh, village or the, the, the this I guess it's a village it's a seafront ocean front um, shops and things like or, or businesses uh, fishing fishing things but I will uh, I will paint that first uh, after this dries and then work my way down so what I've got right now I think is a good start <clears throat> I've got some color I've got an interesting place to to uh, to work from so um, let me um, let me see if there's any questions while I'm letting it dry I will I'm going to turn off the microphone in a second and use a hair dryer to kind of force it a little bit drier but I don't like to do it too, too much because uh, it'll kind of flatten out some of those nice uh, textures that are being created there. So I might just wait a minute. Um, here's a question. Do you draw your images freehand or do you ever use a projector to get them on your paper? Uh, yes, I do both. Um, so I will use a projector to uh, position things, especially complicated um, Oh, complicated buildings, facades, buildings, things like that. I'll do that with my portraits. I'll use a projector quite often to uh, get the main features in the right place. And when you use a projector, you still can't get every detail, but you can get things more proportional. But you'll get exactly what the photo gives you, and you won't get the, the same uh, depth of perspe perspective and some of those things. So you always have to adjust uh, when you use a projector. and uh, and I do that uh, question on the paper. Uh, I guess the question is, what paper is it? Not do you use paper? <laughs> paper? Question mark. I'm kidding. Uh, if this is uh, Arches um, cold press, 140 pound. It is a 12 by 16 piece. I've got it on a gator board, a, a nice uh, thick gator board in this case. I use a lighter weight board for traveling, uh, but this works pretty good for, for internal here. Cindy's making a joke. If I have a gator board, does that mean I also have a crock board or uh, whatever? Anyway, <laughs> no, Cindy. I don't know. Those of you that have been on my uh, workshops, you know, Cindy comes up with laffy taffy jokes once in a while, and those are the silly jokes that come on the wrapper of a, a candy, the laffy taffy candy. And uh, she may have one of those sometime, you never know. But I'm going to turn off the mic now and dry this. And if she comes with a joke, I might turn off the mic anyway. <laughs>
It's pretty exciting. You got on here to watch paint dry with me. Um, question was, uh, do, I, do I always do a value sketch uh, or a value study? Uh, no, I don't. And uh, I often do. But this kind of a painting, um, just because of the nature of the, um, of the photo, if you look at it, there's three values on this thing in my mind. There's the lights of the sky and the water. There's the middle values through the rest of it with you know small changes. And then there's some uh, some darks within those middle values. So it's it, it, you can break it down. That's the way I would do a value study. I would do lights, then I would do this whole pattern here, and then I would do some darks in there. So that and you know, simp this one t to me is a sort of a simple one to understand, um, so I don't really have to do it. Uh, and this, my other painting, is a, a, as much a value study, a colored value study, but it's 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 kind of what it is anyway. So I don't really need to do that. Um, question was here from Trina. Uh, do you thoroughly dry the paper with the dryer? It looks like you might. Yes, uh, I really do. Uh, it, it feels a little cool right now to the touch. So it's a little bit damp, uh, probably internally. Um, I, I would, I, I, I like to have it really dry before I go in. I don't want to uh, let things get, um, get muddy. Sometimes you'll get mud if you build up uh, from the, from the, um, you know, start picking up the color from underneath. But this is dry enough. It's 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 a little cool, but and um, you know, I might. I got a lot of water on it when I started, so it was pretty wet. Let me, um, which, but you asking me that makes me want to now dry it somewhere. Um, I think I will. <laughs> So that's uh, that's pretty good. Um, I will, since we're uh, still waiting for that to dry, let me. Uh, I wanted to show you um, something else, a little promotion, a little selfless, shameless commercial. Um, I have put together uh, of these workshops I'm doing. I have recorded them and I've edited down some of them to clean up and get out the hair dry portions and. And do some things with them. So uh, River Runs uh, is a uh, is one that's uh, got the um, um, it's a neat Colorado scene. Uh, the uh, Pine for Watercolor over here on the right. That's that's one where we have uh, where it um, it's the pine trees up in northern uh, or up up in uh, Lake Tahoe. On the waterfront is one of uh, some boats in uh, Cortez Fishing Village in Florida, and then Lacey Lucy, the one portrait one. Uh, of a young lady uh, holding some lace and um, so they're all available uh, on on demand if you go to my website you can find the link and there's an un unlimited streaming with those so at michaelholter.com slash video all right that's enough of that okay we're back um thanks for your questions by the way i really appreciate the um the questions. I appreciate you uh, all wanting to know what I'm doing. I, I, I forget to say things that I need to say sometimes. And so, so what we're going to do now is we're going to create that uh, row of uh, buildings back there. And I need to, um, um, I don't need to do a lot with that. They can, they can kind of, they could be very simple or they could have a little more, a um, little more to them. Uh, it depends on my my desire, the artist's desire. Every painting is different, and everybody approaches every painting in a different way. Uh, what I'm going to do, because first of all, because I have a limited amount of time, I'm going to treat this as pretty much a silhouetted, backlit uh, portion of this image. And so I'm going to start with. Uh, I usually work a lot with. Uh, Burnt Sienna and uh, Ultramarine Blue. Those are my 
kind of go to colors and I create a stew uh, that I can warm up with some reds. I can cool down with some other colors. Uh, I, I just work through these colors and make these nice grays and then adjust them as I go. So when I look at this scene here, I want it to be fairly cool. I don't want it to start off too warm. So I'm going to make sure it's on the cool side. And I'm going to, um, I, I'm kind of just torn a little bit. I, I kind of left the idea of having that end of that dock, which I've shortened up a bit, end of that pier or whatever it is that, uh, so I'll, I'll do what I, what I indicated I was going to do in the drawing. Just create a little bit of a, and there's, um, if you can see it or not, there's a little, it looks like old telephone poles and lights, things there. Um, here's a, another, I don't know what this is, something along in here. And then there's a, um, I'm going to shift the color a little bit, add a little red into it to warm it up. And then leave a little bit of an edge, like there's some light hitting that. And then there's some different things happening into the water. Then we can go into, there's boats back there. So if they're catching light on the top, we need to make sure we keep a little bit of separation. And I don't need to get detailed with any of this. This is a fairly large Escoda Perla brush. Uh, this is a number 14, but it's got a great point on it. Um, I can keep this as dark as that, or I can lighten it a little bit too um, as I go. Lift some of it off, um, connect it together. It's always a good idea to have your um, uh, areas that you're working on connect one to another. Um, some people paint much more... Um, uh, we'll port, you know, each portion is a little different, and you know, and so I, I tend to um, want to make my um, um, my paintings a little bit connecting, um, not so separated as, as some people would do it. So here's another boat here. Leave the top of that. Let's get that shape in there. Now this uh, this building here that's a little taller is more uh, warm tones. It's like um, I'm going to put some of that raw sienna that I've used already. I'm going to put some of that in here and get the front of this a little bit warmer. Let it bleed into this other stuff so it isn't isolated. Um, and there's enough light hitting the side of it over here that it um, it might just indicate a shadow on there and then let that um, let that be perhaps I'll drop some of this color in a couple other places just to build, build some harmony some color harmony in here um, and I'll come to those colors in a little bit now there's some uh, sort of reddish tile orange red tile pick up a little, uh, a little more red and we'll just throw a little of that in here. Now I'm not worrying too much about uh, all kinds of textures and things that you might find on, on a building. I'm more interested in in the general um, shape here and so I'm going kind of and of course again I'm, 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 like I told you I have a limited time here to do this painting so I'm going to try to think of it that way as a as a uh, subject that needs to be done pretty quickly. So there's some objects here, there's some things in the water, there's some, I don't have to be real precise, this is all um, little bits of, uh, of the, uh, of this waterfront. Some parts are darker, some parts are lighter. It's you know mainly I'm looking at values and a little bit of the color as well, of course. There's something there that's very light. I don't know what that is. Um, 
it's a little hard to tell. I'm not going to worry about it. It looks a little round on the top, almost like a dome. Um, why not? We'll put a little shape in there that's different than the other shapes. I had marked a little post here or something. There's some. I think there. I think there's some lights, um, lamps. Uh, and, I'm a, and as I go in here, that I'm, I'm tending to go a little lighter. It looks like um, I'm going to add some. Um, um, add a little bit of um, titanium white opaque in here, just just for fun to give it a little more of a. It's, it's, when you when you are painting uh, light values in watercolor, what you're really doing is just spreading out the particles, the pigments, the the uh, the, the color. Uh, it gets a little bit uh, diluted, uh, and if you use some um, opaque sometimes it just helps to give a little body to it a British call it body color and that's part of the um, the way they have over the years uh, painted uh, some of them you know not not as much but now this um, I use a little of this cerulean blue that I had before I haven't used much of that here yet but it's just, it's a color that is this is part of this building is picking up the the light coming off the sky, which is going to be a little bit on that blue of the sky. That uh, there's a shadow coming off there. And I'm going to shift it. That blue um, a little more than I want there, so I'm going to cut it back a little bit with some stuff. And I just picked up some things off the palette that make a gray uh, just to, to blend in with everything else that's here. Now there's enough moisture at the bottom of this edge so I can I can uh, still work with that and uh, drag, you know, bring it down. This is wet, quite wet, and I want it to be quite wet. Um, I'm gonna just dance around, make some marks here and there. Um, I'll leave some of the boat parts a little bit um, like the front of the boat is a little lighter uh, I think Hope that works it's always good to work uh, light into dark or light against dark dark against light when you're doing any kind of uh, any kind of painting um, let's see there's some this this roof has some almost looks like some rust on it Make that roof a little bit more interesting, maybe. Uh, it's always a good thing to, uh, it, to me, it's a little bit of exaggeration on uh, some of the angles on roofs. Sometimes uh, being too precise, um, trying to be too accurate with perspective can be a little boring. Uh, sometimes you need to have a little more... Uh, uh, action going on a little more of the of the um, dynamic nature of angles and shapes and the way the way uh, the way a line uh, you know slants will give you more uh, a more dynamic feel than if you paint it uh, kind of precise and accurate sometimes the most precise uh, stuff is the most boring I guess that's coming from me, who who is a more of an impressionist than I am a photorealist or anything like that. I'm, I'm a, a realist, but I don't um, I don't need to have everything perfect. I like this color I've got right here. I'm just going to stick with that for a while and just make a big, large area of this color I'm working across here. I think, and then try to. Um, Utilize that color maybe as a background and fill it in, um, fill in some details into here, um, perhaps. So here's, uh, and then there's a pretty good size. Let me just mark this with a little bit of a mark and then take some red. There's a big red um, 
sign banner right there. And there's another one on this building here. Um, do it while it's still wet and uh, let it just um, bleed in a little bit. So here's some more towers and uh, like poles and things. Here's some and I put a little darker value on some areas of this of this uh, thing I painted here. It kind of gives it a little more of a variety of uh, you know where the shadows might be falling. And, and every every uh, little object here, every little portion of this build these buildings, they'll have lots of little oh, windows and doors and objects in them. So we'll we'll work on that more later. And then there's a stone wall down here, so let me get a little more of this warm tone in here, probably. It goes right behind these boats, but I don't want to make it too... Um, I want to make it... I want to have some variety in it as well, so let's just dance around a little bit and create some... Uh, some where some light is catching some of the rocks or whatever. Okay, so you see how the dark, which is still not that dark, it's still kind of a middle value against that sky. Now that sky is starting to, to make more more sense value-wise. Um, it looks like these clouds are, are um, um, you know, misty and hazy, and then I added a little bit of that white in there to give a little haziness to that spot there. And I could do a little more of that, but... Um, I think we're okay. I'm going to take a little more dark. I'm going to use a little sepia, real dark sepia, and put a couple of dark spots on some of these. These are still a little wet, so it, it'll um, melt in a little and show a few things. Maybe it's, uh, you know, there's some doorways and people maybe even in here or whatever it is. Just to give it a little more definition without much detail. See, it's getting dry over here already, so. Um, <clears throat> losing some of the uh, <clears throat> that nice bleeding effect that happens when it's uh, damp. But you can, you know, some of that can be done after the fact, after it dries. <clears throat> now we got to work our way down into the boats. Um, and um, uh, the boats are just about the same. They're just a, a, a series of uh, the shapes that um, come down off of the, from the back to the foreground. Um, let me get this photo. See if it shows me anything in detail. There's really not a lot to, to figure out there. There's just these bands of, of different values and a few little areas where it's catching some light. So let's uh, let's play with that a little bit. Somebody asked, uh, let me say hi to Posey first here. Um, hi, Posey. <laughs> and um, somebody asked about the paints. Um, Holbein, American Grumbacher, or Windsor Newton. Yes, <laughs> that's what I have. I have a little bit of everything. I use a lot of Daniel Smith. Um, I have um, some uh, M. Graham, uh, which I love a lot. They're very, colors are great, and they're honey-based, uh, so they stay moist. Uh, don't use those as much now. Um, when you travel, they're not as good because they, they can slip around on your palate a lot. I, my, my, my favorite... Um, Burnt Sienna is the Windsor Newton, so I use that for, for that. Most of these are Daniel Smith. The, the opaque colors over here are Holbein uh, for the most part. Um, that's an American Journey titanium buff there and, and uh, a mixture of other things. But So some of them are, are uh, like I said, mostly Daniel Smith, a few Windsor Newton, a few Holbein, some American Journey, some uh, M. Graham, little bit of everything. 
Um, <laughs> Nancy thinks that would be that would be fun to do uh, do as a high noon. My I call my Saturday workshops high noon workshops. So that's what she's talking about. Um, so those lighter opaque colors are uh, white on the end, titanium buff, Juan Brilliant, number one, and number two. Uh, this is a uh, lavender, and this is a verditter blue. Um, my colors, I can show you those briefly. Here's, here's the color list. Now, those are on my website as well, but the ones on the bottom there are the ones that um, are the... Um, the, the, the uh, opaque versions, opaque colors. Okay. All right, we need to work our way down. Now, I've, I've also indicated on here a person in the boat, her here, and a couple people here, perhaps. Um, perspective with people is that if you are on a, on, a, on a level with them, then your eye level on this is going to be up in here, the horizon line. And if everybody was standing on the same plane as you were, their heads would all be at the same point. But these boats, are, I'm showing them as being a little lower. So these people are going to be a little smaller and a little lower down, like I'm up on a ridge uh, looking down, which is somewhat true. Somewhat true. So I need to um, continue down, working my way down. Let me do a, a continue with this uh, these colors, uh, just a stew of... Uh, warm and cool mixing as I go and you can see that on my on the screen there so and I think I'll keep it cooler as we start because it'll be cooler in the you know the background and then as it gets a little closer I'll probably warm them up a little bit so there's some uh, I want to leave some sand some of the beachy stuff there so let's uh, let's make this boat here a positive in other words, uh, leaving some um, um, background to cut into it. Now here's, and I don't know what's going to be at the end of this. And this, for, the front of the boat, I want it to be uh, a little bit um, light. Uh, so I lift some of this back. Let that boat just kind of have a little gradation. Now the next boat, let's change the color a little bit. Um, I think that's still a little wet right there. It's one of those areas where I should dry it, I suppose. So let's leave a little sliver of the of the top of the boat catching the light here. And um, the, for the next boat as well, we'll leave a little sliver. Now I have this uh, this person I'm going to put in here. Um, I'm going to probably paint around him just a tad, keep some light on him. And um, switch the color a little bit again, maybe a little more more blue. And as I get closer, I want to have a few more details and a few more the light hitting a few spots on these boats a little bit more. So I will want to um, indicate some of these uh, things. And, and, and they don't have to be real detailed, just little random changes and shifts from light to dark. Um, I want to put some... Uh, Put a little red, more red on there because it was in my on my palette, no real reason. Adds a little color to it, and go back to my my grays, browns, marks, marks, marks. It's just a matter of where do you want to, uh, what do you want to uh, keep in terms of the lights. And a lot of it is is um, personal preference, actually. So that's quite a bit darker there. Um, 
There are some tires hanging on some of these uh, boats, um, the round objects. You just need to have a shape. You don't need to. And then there are these interesting rudder shapes. Uh, they have inboard motors with these big propellers on them, and then there are these big rudder things that stick out the back. Um, rudder thingies, I think I said. So I've got this boat uh, coming down and this one here. I think I need to um, make sure I have a shadow coming off this boat. And that shadow is going to define the edge of this boat. So. And we can put some other... And this, this man here needs a dark... Um, Maybe he needs a, a cap of some sort. Maybe it's like a, almost like a beanie. I, I think they wore some of those. Some of them wore just those short brim, short visor brimmed uh, hats. Well, these fishermen did. Uh, okay. Now I need to go into this last boat, which is at a different angle. And it's from this other photograph. Uh, pull that out. It's a little different angle. I'm using that as a reference here. And um, I want to um, keep some of the lights on the top of the areas of the boat, so I want to make sure I do that. Now there's this section here, and there's objects you know sticking out back here where probably where that propeller goes and where that rudder goes. So I'm just going to throw some marks in here. And um, this whole portion right in here is fairly well lit by the sun. And then it goes into a shadow down in here. And that actually has some violet in it to me. I'm going to throw some violet in here. Violet is a good... Uh, addition to a, a this kind of wood in the shadow because it's it's cool it's picking up the blue of the sky at the same time it is um, warm it's got the warmth of the wood so here's a this little hollow of the boat oops that went a little too far and then there's a shadow on the side of this I'm going to warm this up with a little red Make it a little more brown that way. <clears throat> the light's hitting this part of the boat up here. There is a post here, and then of course there's this um, some of the stuff that's happening on the top of the boat, and then this this I guess it's the would make the keel this this front here is, is bigger and stronger and more of a direct angle now these are these are uh, what makes these um, this the side of the of this um, of this boat these boats interesting is they're they're just logs and they're um, um, very very interesting how they've um, use this this material these lump this lumber to create these um, boats so I'm going to just um, keep it fairly light because we're, we're talking about an area now close up I mean I can, I can go darker but this close-up area is an area where you can see into the shadows a little more um, and as the boat curves underneath here it's going to be darker cooler and it's going to have this this sh form here of, of, of light uh, grade gradation of light from from the top down what that curve is and we have a shadow here um, a nice shadow and it's going to be a, a fun one to 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 include we've got to have we've got to have this shadow come out and I'm going to do it much like what's on the photo here. And what's going to happen, 
this shadow has a uh, uh, this this ground down here is picking up the cerulean blue and it's picking up the the warmth of the of the rocks on the ground. I'm going to put a little red into it and uh, and let that um, sort of give you an idea, viewer, an idea that there's something going on through that shadow. But I want the shadow to to go from cool into into that uh, warmth. Makes it interesting anyway. Okay. That's the main the main shapes of the background and the boats at this point. Um, question: Do you ever use masking fluid to save your whites? I guess is what the point was there. Um, I I don't. I rarely rarely do. Uh, I will use it. I will use masking tape occasionally to tape something off if I feel like it. Um, I don't really like. Um, uh, I don't really think there's a problem, um, you know, with tape, but I don't really like to use uh, masking fluid. It gives it uh, kind of hard edges uh, when you clean it off. And um, unless it's something real, I don't know, um, something where you just have to. I mean, there's a point some places where it probably works, but I, I prefer not to. It's I don't really like working with it. It's hard to get off and all kinds of things. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to let this dry a little bit. Um, probably I should go over here and uh, um, start working on the blue of the, of the water. Now, the thing about that water is I've got some blue there, but I don't have a lot of um, um, a lot to contrast with. So I'm going to just probably have to throw some value over that and then I'm going to um, as, as the photo shows you know there's a lot of rocks because the tide is out and I'm gonna I'm gonna keep the water much more prominent than than the rocks I think but there will be some rocks coming out among that let me do a little bit of um, let me play a little bit with these figures over here um, I think that would be a fun thing to try here at this point. Put some figures in there, and I've marked where I would put a couple. Um, and that may not, may or may not end up being where they end up. But I'm going to take some red. I'm going to put a little red on this uh, fellow's face here. Maybe his arms. Maybe he's working here, and he's got his arms like this, just to kind of position him. That red is indicating uh, his, his skin tone, and it'll lighten down. But it's warm. You know, you need warmth. Uh, where the skin is. So I'm going to have a person here, maybe one further back, a little smaller. Um, I'm going to use, um, just going to kind of use a very neutral color again to start creating this shape. Um, and I'm just going to let my imagination uh, sort of tell me what he's doing here when I put a shape on there. Uh, he looks like he's walking. We put a, his arm there. Maybe he's carrying something. Um, I'm going to make him a little bit of a stick figure. Not too detailed. He's carrying a pail. And he's got this other guy. Well, I was thinking it was going to be further back, but let's 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 keep him. Let's connect them a little bit so they're kind of in the same. This guy's a little a little bigger. His uh, now. Um, they're going to need to get fixed up a little bit here as we go, but let's put a little, um, they're going to have to have a shadow. 
below them and they're going to have to have some shadow coming across and there's probably some shadow coming across some of these other from something else over here behind too so I'm going to have to end up painting something over here for some texture and some some objects or some something It might be okay, something like that. It gives a little bit of human interest into this this scene. So these stuff, this these boats here are going to have to have more dark detail. So this is really my big middle value, uh, and I'm going to have to go in uh, with a, with another value uh, darker in a little while. Let me um, let me see. Let me take a moment to dry this. Um, well, I. Turn off the microphone so it doesn't ring in your ears. Several times when we were in China, there were people on the beach um, with a pail uh, digging, I guess, digging clams out of the out of the uh, uh, tidal areas. So uh, maybe that's what these two are doing. Uh, maybe it's a couple of ladies coming out to get some get some clams. At least that's you know a story, and that's the thing I like to I like to do is is um, I like to have a story with my paintings so having a you know my own interpretation of what was going on or what the people are doing uh, is 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 kind of a fun thing to do but it, you know, it also helps you helps you as an artist to get into it and, and imagine things and create um, what you want it to be um, let's see if I can erase this pencil line it's usually a little tricky when after you put water on it it gets pretty solid but anyway uh, so I'm going to I'm going to darken the, um, the foreground here on the water a little bit. Let's do, um, uh, let, let's see, I'm going to clean up a little of this here. And I'm going to start with some cerulean again. But I don't want to make a, just a cerulean sky because I've got, I've got, a, I toned it down and I have that violet in there. Uh, I'm going to tone it a little bit with some of this stuff over here, kind of make it a little grayer. Um, a little bit grayed out. Let's see what have I got here. And I'm going to let the, let the brush skip across a little bit and create some, uh, some light from the texture of the paper. And I'm going to, uh, obviously, we're going to try to find a way to show that there's some uh, of this is, is also um, some, some, of the, some of the sand and the rocks and the, all that's going on here. There is a, um, let's see, and I want to put a little more of, the, of that violet warmth into it that I put into the sky. Let's see if I can put a little of that in here. A little too much. It's hard to lift it off though once you get it on there, so it's going to have to be. All right.
I think the color picks up those colors, which is what I wanted. It works all right. These are kind of little blossoms here. I don't care for it. Let's move those around a little bit. There's one there too. Alrighty. Um, so um, as the water rolls in, uh, there would be uh, some some uh, waves coming in. I'm thinking uh, you don't really see it on there, but let's just uh, put a little more ultramarine blue, even a little green into it. Just put a little color to it, and let's put a couple of um, waves just rolling in. It's wet into wet, so these little these little waves are just going to blend right in and, and uh, look like they're like they're part of the the rolling of the water. So when you look at it from a little different angle, um, you can see that, that, uh, how wet it is there. It's still pretty wet. Um, so I need to uh, uh, balance out the darks against the these middle values and then really all this area where the, the sand and the beach and these rocks are going to be there, that's all... Um, Needs to be a fairly light values, but I don't want them as, as white as what I'm seeing here now. I'm also going to probably need to add um, add some things here. Let's um, let's just I have this big rock um, which was there, and I think I kind of like it there. So I'm going to make it um, kind of a neutralized. Um, warm tone with some of this raw sienna and i think i'll just paint it um first paint a value on it and then we'll go in with some shadows on it as well go right to some shadows and take some of this same stuff add a little sepia get a nice warm tone and i'm going to put some shadow on the on this side over here, just like it is on the rock, some shadow. And I'll kind of imagine it's uh, sitting there in the um, in this um, area. Take a damp brush, trail off some of these marks. And I think I'm going to add. I did on the other other painting. Um, that I did. I added some, uh, oh, there's some things floating around in here, but let's say there's a, looking at it compositionally, I'm going to put a, a log or, or a piece of wood or something here now. If I have a piece of wood hit, going this direction, it'll bring your eye in here. If I have one going this direction, it'll bring your eye up in here. Uh, this already is going in an a S curve kind of flow. Uh, I could come back. I could come back here with a small one and bring your eye in that way and then around. Um, which I kind of like that idea. So let's say we have a, 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 a couple of pieces of, of wood laying here. Uh, and that kind of brings your eye um, into this. And maybe there, maybe it's actually a kind of a tree. It's got some branches coming off that one and just some stuff that's that's sitting here and maybe there's some other branches and things but I think it, it you know this creates a little bit of the s curve composition that I kind of like I'm gonna put a little uh, sepia on this side of it uh, as well to give it a little shadow feel and that shadow should um, should definitely drag itself out into the onto the sand here a little bit, a little different color, and uh, it can be a little ragged. It doesn't have to be perfect. I think I need a little more dark on this uh, edge, though. So this whole foreground needs to have some, 
some color and I need to determine um, what color I'm going to use. Now on, on the photo it's quite golden um, sand. Um, you know I used some raw sienna earlier. I probably need to stay with that. Let me do a little flat brush here. This is a flat um, uh, velvet touch at Princeton. I'm going to take a little flat brush and do a little drag some of this across. Maybe I should wait for that to dry there. Um, while I while I do that, um, well look at here. I got a shout out from a great painter, Joseph McGurl. Joe and I were in China together and um, painted together and uh, I watched him do some phenomenal stuff. If you ever get a chance to look at his work, you need to do that. Um, um, Net Williams, Anel Williams found this uh, and uh, 40 minutes in. Yeah, it, it'll be uh, it'll be on both YouTube and Facebook uh, after you know after the live broadcast is over. Uh, the um, uh, it'll still be there. You have to you'll have to wait for it to kind of process and then go back and uh, click on the link on the on the image and it'll start at the beginning. Um, so that will happen um, after a little while. If you do it right away, it'll it'll it won't give it to you. But you gotta give it a little. You have to be a little patient, you know. Okay, I'm gonna dry this for one second. So I'm um, thinking about um, Joseph being on here. Uh, Joseph was the kind of painter I, I always wanted to be, you know, paint those beautiful, uh, very remarkable, uh, realistic um, seascapes and things. Uh, one of the things I loved about Joe's work, it's it, you just walk up to it and you see all those little brush strokes and things he does. There's such a, such a great... Um, great vitality and everything he does it's it's wonderful um, anyway love having these other artists come on and, and share keeps me honest you know I can't uh, I can't fake too much if, if there's somebody watching me that knows what they're doing there I you all are you all are you all are uh, you know, that way so <laughs> I don't mean to I don't mean to shortchange anyone but um, some of these guys just amaze me I'm gonna try a little of this with this bigger flat brush and see what I can get um, see if what kind of color and texture I can get um, again this is um, this is a quite a bit of um, uh, raw sienna dragging it right into this um, The side of this brush, leaving part of it to sparkle a little bit. Now I need it over here as well because there's going to be rocks and so on up in here so I can't assume, I don't want this to all be water over here because this, this, this is definitely the, um, um, the tide has has left uh, left some of the um, um, well, see, it was coming in over there, so I guess it's coming in to cover up this this uh, this area. I don't know when, how they get the boats in and out. They must wait for high tide and then and then they go in and out. But so there's a little bit of that warmth that I was looking for. Um, I think I need a little more of it down in here. Just a quick, quick brushing and giving that a little texture. Looking good. Somebody came up here. I gotta turn my. Somebody it's came. Good. Somebody came to join me here. 
Hi, everybody. Glad you're with us tonight. This is my sweetheart, Cindy. Such and, a great um, time to be together. Thanks for joining us. I'm, I'm getting there. I'm soon done, I think. Okay. Maybe a little bit of that fan would be nice. It's hot. Okay, great. A little warm. Yep. She's my temperature control. I have all these lights on, and it kind of gets a little warm, you know? Okay. Um, so again, that's just another bit of underpainting. I don't, I'm still working in that lighter value range. I don't want to get too carried away with it. And, um, but it does need to be darker. Um, somebody's got no sound. Uh, no audio. A couple of you have no audio. What's going on out there? Can you hear everything, Cindy? I'm going to listen to one of mine here. Sometimes, you know, things happen and it's not on my end. Um, hello. Hey, I hear myself. Well, I hear it on that one on the YouTube. So somebody else says, I hear you. I have sound on my iPad and phone, says this other person. So. So anyway, it's just it must be a little hiccup that's going on with some people's um, uh, uh, feed. So sorry if that's uh, happening. Hopefully you can come back and, and watch it later if it really is a, a you know a thing that knocks knocks out or something. But okay, uh, so I need to kind of get into the finishing touches here. Um, don't have a lot of time left. Um, I still feel like I need to. Um, push this um, a little differently around the boats here. And part of it is um, you know, I'm changing the, the way the, the water um, the way the water comes into the scene it, you know, on the photo it would be mostly sand. Now I can come back over this way with, with the, some of the rocks and some of that. And I might. I might do that. It depends on what I, how I think it looks. I think what I might do is do a little bit of um, fixing on some of the boats, um, and that. But what I mean by fixing is I want to just darken a few things here, like this one back in here um, got a little light, and this probably needs to be quite a bit darker. And I don't want to make the whole thing a big dark mass, so I'm going to put a little um, leave some parts of it. Make some, uh, make some marks on that boat. Um, and there's, you know, there's a variety of things happening on these boats. Um, might be people on them. There might be, uh, and over here is shoreline. There might be some stuff back there. Um, this one here needs a little bit of def definition, I think. Some of them had these little mast type things on them. So that breaks up the horizontal a little bit with some vertical. Um, and I don't want to get into detail in the buildings and back at this point. I want to keep my detail uh, up in here on the foreground. So my darks need to come up here. So this guy here that I made, I want to put a little more attention on him. Let's make his make him a little darker and um, and that means a, a little more dark around where he is and there's some again there's tires uh, hanging on some of these boats there's objects uh, there's a lot of things that that make these boats interesting that are you don't have to paint every detail uh, it's just a matter of putting some marks in there, some calligraphy, basically, to show some of the things that you um, are indicating. Um, okay. Now, this boat here in the foreground... Um, 
I do want to emphasize a few things here. You know, when you do, uh, even if it's the same uh, amount of pigment in the paint that I'm putting on top, if by putting another layer on top, you're going a little bit darker. So you don't necessarily have to mix a really dark paint to make a dark on these. You, you just need to uh, remember that you're, uh, you're building up layers as you go. And uh, those layers um, those layers can be what really gives gives it um, gives it some interest you know and then like these these tires that are here um, and up in here uh, there's needs to be a little darker in here. And some of these, I'm not going to, I'm not going to make each of these logs look round or anything like that, but, um, and sometimes it's just good to just suggest a few things and then let the rest, um, let the rest of it just be, be part of, you know, the imaginary portion of what goes on with, with painting. You don't have to do everything. Uh, on the rock there are little things happening. Uh, take a damp my brush, take some of the take the pigment out of it. So just have some water and just soften some of these little calligraphy marks. Um, Okay, that brings those boats a little bit more foreground. I still have too much, um, too much um, light in the foreground. I need to, I need to push this darker down in here. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to, but I think I will dry this again just to make sure I don't mess up any of the parts that I like of what I've done. I'll turn the microphone off for a minute. this okay so I'm going to um, stand up and uh, take a, a whack at it from a standing position so I can see this a little bit better um, standing is good I sometimes sit too much when I paint um, but I think I want to get uh, get my arm my arm moving a little bit and uh, can we use this big flat brush again um, and I think I'll start with I think I'm going to start with some um, some violet some gray violet stuff um, just to um, ooh that's way too red there I picked up some um, Alizarin and alizarin crimson can really, really go crazy. Now I need to neutralize it a little bit. And I'm going to put some burnt sienna in there so it's a little bit more of a gray violet. But why am I doing that? Because um, I feel like it needs to because I've got so much violet up on the top. So let me just try it here and see what I've got. Um, big uh, big sweeping brush stroke pushing that a little bit darker pushing it over here a little darker pushing it back here a little darker a little, a little more violet um, I 
That violet now is a little much. Let's uh, let me take a little bit of cerulean. I see some blue in some areas and some of the water and so on. Let's just uh, let's see what that does. Might be a little too much. So we go back to the warm tones. Let's do a little bit of the yellows into the violet. I'm getting a little bit of a, 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 a um, problem here with the colors. Let's uh, let's just do a little different um, treatment. Let's let's mist this a little bit. I'm going to make the bottom a little more abstract, I think. There's lots of color and, and action down the bottom. Let's do a little, um, take some burnt sienna in here, and I'm going to, I'm going to splatter some in here. Let that... Um, that do some things and see what happens with that. But I think I need it more back to my raw sienna. about watercolor it's 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 water and pigment and this paper and the paper's a good paper pigments are good pigments but now it's a matter of getting them on there in a way that I like in a way that pleases me um, that wasn't working the way I wanted it to so sometimes I just turn a foreground like this into something that's a little more abstract and it, it really makes it interesting now it's a, a little a little dull at this point. Let's see. Let's just find some other colors that are a little more vibrant here. Take some of my more opaque colors. Get some of that in here. See how the um, paper is rippling. Look at it from that side too. It's doing a lot of rippling here. So I'm not getting a very nice uh, color uh, effect that I want right now. Let's see. Um, lots of things happening along here, the water, got all kinds of rocks. Let's um, So this brush is a um, a um, kind of a favorite of mine. It's a a Princeton long round um, Princeton Velvet Touch long round. It's a round brush, but it has really nice point to it. You can get really wonderful wonderful things to happen at the you know with the point of the brush, and you can also um, um, use it, you know, use them more broadly. Now 
Now, sometimes you, uh, you know, you look at the photo and you, you don't you stop looking at the photo. So here's, you know, what is this here? Well, maybe there's some shrub, uh, maybe there's some grasses growing behind that rock right there. Um, since it was wet in the wet and it created that old shape, why not? Uh, you know, let the painting, let the painting develop. Don't worry about whether you got everything exactly the way it was on the photo or whatever. Um, So I'm watching this um, foreground down here to see if, if what I need to do with it. It's drying, and um, you know, is it is it helping my painting or hurting my painting? That's my question, I guess. So I'm going to continue up here. There's lots of uh, areas up in here where there's rocks showing now because of the the way that the um, The tide is moving. So I just want to make an interesting, interesting transition from the, from the um, water to the shore. Make sure I've got good transition. Nice edges, nice Nice variety in the way the shapes go, the way the rocks are sitting out here in the water. And so I think I need to go a little further. I'm going to use a little more violet. Go out here a little further. Coming along good. Thank you, thank you. Okay, we're getting there, I think. Um, still looking at this foreground, trying to figure out what's what I need to do here. Some very ancient rocks were on that foreground. I love to pick rocks and shells. And those boats were incredible. They're so old, and yet they were still using them. Men were um, taking apart the seaweed and, the, and to make ropes with it. Remember that part, Michael, where yep. they were drying the seaweed and pounding them on rocks? Very, very primitive, and yet still keeping on with the work, still doing the very same thing, fishing. It was fun, really fun to see that. I'm going to um, continue to work on this foreground down here until I feel it's working for me. I have a question. Is this viewable later on YouTube? Yep, I think I addressed that. It's um, it is available. It'll be on both YouTube and Facebook later um, for people to um, lo uh, you know, it'll be there. It'll it'll be once the recording once the rec the live stream is over, it'll um, it'll then process and then it'll be there to watch. So I think this boat here is a little too light. I think I need to go a little darker on parts of it. Um, there we 
go. So sometimes um, I'm just um, being a little bold with color is, is a good thing. Just feel like I want to get a little more into the violet here. Might look a little strong on the screen. Looks, looks good here though. Might be a little too violet, so what's the complement of violet? Uh, a yellow, uh, raw sienna, or the, anything on the yellow side. If I go in here with that, it'll tone back the violet. Um, it definitely looks a lot stronger on the screen than it does um, here. Doesn't look that dark. And I think what happened is I, I, with with the sky. I think with the, the sky and this this um, row of buildings. Um, I like I like this being darker down here. Um, so I think I might even um, push it darker over on this part. Make these same colors, the violets. Push this darker, just a little, little bit of a value shift. Um, this also needs to be a little more violet than just even in the boat. And I think all that violet in the sky has really influenced me to, to push it this way. Just something up here that actually could be a little warmer. Let me dry this for a second. I'm going to turn the mic off.
So this is, I um, wanted to just mention again, the um, Trinity Arts Guild here in uh, the Dallas area. They are a wonderful organization. They have all kinds of painters. It's not just watercolor. And they have shows uh, occasionally, while well, they have had. Uh, I also know that uh, that they have, uh, they are looking for and have some plans on a new building. They've been in one for quite a while and they have to uh, find a new one apparently. Uh, and it's interesting season because so many of um, so many of the arts groups that um, that I deal with and, and you know, all the traveling that we were going to do this year, Cindy and I had multiple trips ready to go, and we uh, they really canceled so much of it that um, I don't know we you know we we're fortunate to be able to do this. Uh, um, I was able to get into this fairly early and get the technology going. Um, getting asked by lots of artists to share my information about what to do with these, um, with these, with this technology to kind of help them uh, get um, a better um, uh, online presence. So it, you know, I'm helping that way, with, which is a lot of fun. But the point is. Uh, you know, everybody who had uh, workshops at their location and all of that, they've kind of lost that ability right now with the COVID. So, so this is dry and um, I'm going to take a toothbrush here and I'm going to um, texture this area where the rocks are in this whole, this whole front here where I had um, changed that with the, um, uh, with that wash I did. Just going to put a little texture with some of this nice dark brown mixture I made. Try not to get it onto the water too much, but it's all right. A little up in here wouldn't hurt. A little up in here. So wherever you have, you know, you can always uh, use a, a, a toothbrush. I, I always tell my students any kind of mark making tool will work. You can, you can get by with almost anything to make uh, to make marks that will make a painting work. Uh, one of the things that I always end up doing is um, splattering somewhere on the painting and creating a little spot like that one right there, which has to then become a bird. You don't want to try to take it off, you just use it. It's a bird, there's always birds, doves, pigeons, whatever it is, wherever you are, there's some kind of bird creating a... a uh, some kind of a sight in the sky. So we got some birds in there. We have some um, uh, color and value here. We have, I can also actually, a lot of times I will also then with a toothbrush, clean it up good. Um, use it with some white take this white it's like a toothpaste and you know, make a little bit of paint there and then add that in too um, so you get some variety in these uh, in this area where you had put some splatter um, and then, oh, I dropped the glob on it too here. Look at that. It's a big seashell. Big seashell. And I can add some other, with a brush, I can add some other darks uh, a little bit here and there. Um, you know, we've got this this log here that kind of, these logs that kind of got lost. Uh, there's other, what do they call it? Flotsam and Jetsam, I think is the name, isn't it? For <laughs> stuff on the on the shore, things that land, it just marks. Um, and um, a few other things that I could do, I always um, look for places where I can use a little opaque to add a little bit of a highlight. Now, for instance, uh, putting a little white straight from the tube onto um, these figures over here, if I can get it done. Uh, placed on here kind of neatly. Just a little bit of a, a catch of light 
to uh, you know bring a little life to an area on the back of this thing on the boat or this man here that I have in the boat this fisherman and his shoulders uh, get his shoulders mostly show where he is kind of define him maybe even this this tire this tire here maybe is catching some light this one here maybe catching some light just a little bit of uh, sparkle with a with the white you can put it uh, put it anywhere Good. Um, and I don't mind doing that with some other colors too you have the um, this is the um, lavender which on these characters right here if, if I put that on one of them he becomes a little bit more like a He's got a, a lighter colored shirt in the shadows. Um, and you know, it might be that there's some little spots here and there where I, I brighten it up with a little bit of opaque. And you can even go into the opaque um, view on brilliance, the more yellow or orangey uh, opaques, and add a little bit of something with that. It doesn't, you know, it, it can be a, a nice little touch here and there. Now there's, I'm sort of randomly doing it. I'm not really doing it um, with too much purpose at this point. And you can do it on the rocks. Um, you can add some of the other colors into the foreground here to put a little life to it. Um, and I mean you can even use it for a the signature. I'm going to sign this. This is my final step in my uh, seven steps that I take to do a watercolor. Sign it. Take ownership. Um, this is the way you painted it on this day, the way you were feeling that day. And um, that's about it. I think I'm going to do one thing that I haven't done yet. I should take, I'm going to take this little rigger here. Uh, this is a needle nose rigger, a, a um, El Barrow castanet rigger. I'm going to take a small bit of that and do a few ropes, uh, just some hanging ropes into the. And those are those are just you know little things that are always there when you're when you're doing boats. There's always some ropes, and it's easy to just do them in there with a rigger. So, I might have a few things to clean up on this. There's a, a, a bit there, here and there, that I might want to do. Uh, let me take the tape off of this. My able assistant is taking the tape away. I'm good at taking tape away. You should uh, have a, um, a professional tape taker aware. Um, so, this has been fun. Um, don't forget, um, I, I will be doing this uh, same thing uh, for a little bit longer period of time, I believe, on uh, Wednesday night. I think they, they want a, like a couple of hours of time. And uh, so we'll, we'll be doing this again this week, which is interesting. Can you go a little closer? There. Um, and uh, anyway, um, this is about where it's at. Um, uh, something like that. Um, so uh, we are um, kind of coming to the end here. Um, somebody, what in the world is that? My, my, my quote got on there somehow, and it's like it quoted it, must have recorded it or something. That's kind of odd. So, uh, any, you know, any questions on the, um, that, that you can pop in right now? I'll be watching here for a second, and we can. When it's on Facebook, they can see the beginning if they jumped on later on? Um, if they, yes, they'll, if they jump on after, if it, the question was, on Facebook or YouTube, can you see the whole thing? Yes. If you go to 
uh, those uh, locations later, not not immediately, because it takes a while for the for the um, computer to uh, generate the, um, uh, the the final um, the final uh, pro I guess process the video is what it's called. Uh, it takes a while to do that. So once that happens, it will uh, then then it'll be available. So. What do you think? Oh, no, no, a couple hours, hour, maybe 10 minutes. I'm not sure. Won't take long. But I'm getting some thank yous. That's nice. I appreciate you uh, being with us. Um, I enjoyed uh, enjoyed sharing. And um, uh, somebody asked, what time will we start on uh, on uh, Wednesday night? It, it, is, uh, it starts at 7 o'clock Pacific time, so 9 o'clock for me, 9 o'clock on Wednesday evening. Um, Richard says he enjoyed. Thanks, Richard. I appreciate that a ton. Um, really appreciate you being on here. Gentleman from Peru, and I believe China. China. Somebody from China. Somebody from well, Peru. I could not. I could not um, read it. It appears Chinese. So maybe one of our new friends from China. Well, I had uh, I had somebody from Australia last uh, from one of my workshops, and I've had. Uh, People from lots of different places, so we're we're hearing from uh, we're hearing from people from all over. It's really fun. It's an amazing thing this uh, this technology, and and I, I, I sure enjoy enjoy the doing these demos and doing these workshops. Uh, appreciate you all joining in and being a part of this. Um, will I be doing a face painting on Wednesday? You mean like face painting or <laughs> no? It will not be a human. Uh, it'll be a landscape. So, uh, <laughs> thank you, Ruth. Um, uh, uh, love uh, Galax, Virginia. Um, Rebecca had us out there for a workshop at their art center. I don't know how. I guess you've been doing some things at your art center. Uh, I'm sure it's uh, slowed down a lot, but um, that's a beautiful little town in Virginia. And we really enjoyed our time there. Um, any other comments? We'll we'll uh, continue to to make some uh, some response here if you choose. Uh, anyway, um, we Cindy and I both again really enjoyed uh, having you as part of our evening. And uh, you know I'm a little worn out, so I think I'll just call it a night, and we're gonna. Uh, hang it up here. Uh, you can come uh, again Wednesday and take a look. I also have workshops on uh, a regular basis if you check my website uh, regularly. I haven't got one scheduled at the moment. There are those three that I mentioned, or four that I mentioned earlier that are um, now available uh, for uh, uh, streaming on demand. You can, you can buy them and then watch them as much as you'd like. Um, so anyway, thank you so much for being a part of this. We're gonna, we're gonna check out now. Um, See you later. Happy trails.